want to start a fighter here and a fighter here, get the draw going, and hopefully pull the flame down in there. So this has been going, I let it two hours ago, uh, it's been doing very nicely, I'm quite pleased, it's a very windy day, no problem to, for the fire because it's all underground, and got the heat coming out here. I'm going to pull this uh, chimney out and stack some of these uh, concrete blocks on top. Um, and spin them a little bit and then put uh, fill out with water and see what kind of heat I get out of it uh, used for, for uh, cooking. Um, my guess is I may ruin a bunch of these uh, concrete because uh, they're old, they've been laying out outdoors so moisture in them might pop them. I'll take a peek down there. And here's my little periscope into the fire. Pit. And then I left a crack open there. Secondary. Tiny bit of smoke coming out once in a while, but it's burning really clean. I've got this piece of uh, copper screen. And um, if you're worried and you're getting some ash, copper screen just sitting on top uh, will keep the, any large embers from going through. As you can see, it's, it's blowing here. We're a little bit out of the wind, but the fire is really out of the wind because it's underground. And this uh, here is starting to get warm now. I can still put my hand on it, but uh, there you can see the steam coming off of it. So it's finally worked its way through here. It's not cool anymore, but it's holding a lot of that heat down in there into the char making process. So at this point, I think I'm getting close to the end. The char is getting pretty deep. There. The flame. the flame's coming up the uh, chimney fairly high, and my feeling is that's probably not that good. We're getting quite a lot of secondary burn, so we're burning a lot of that uh, wood gas as it exits. Oh, and we got a split here. So, so that chimney did not follow this fire. It's starting to get warm, it's still 
tolerable. So the other thing is when you're getting your flames up that high, you can see how the uh, cars are condensing against the cooler metal pot and the metal around it. So you're not burning your tires in the pit. So, you know, the rate of how, how you feed your feedstock in takes a bit of skill to make it efficient. Just add the fuel to a point where the things are still, if you see them, they're low in the chimney, and mostly in the pit here. Now I have no real idea of what the temperature is, but watch how quickly it ignites when I put it in. I mean, that's, that's a hot temperature in there. So it's already producing wood gas and burning it off. Coming up the stem just a few seconds. And they're starting to get some steam off the top of the pot here. It hasn't been too long. I don't think I want to put my hand in it anymore to test the temperature. It's not boiling, but the steam is coming off. One of the advantages I'm finding out of having sort of a long feeder trough is that if it starts to smoke, if I, you know, you add, add something that takes off too fast, uh, or producing more, more gas and can be burned, and it'll get smoky and um, I'm pretty well able to by pulling the fuel and just pulling it back away pulling the fire out toward the opening uh, it'll clear up in pretty fast uh, well, and in, it's been about three hours almost exactly since I started uh, and not too long ago that I put this on it's rolling boil now um, so we got plenty of cooking heat it's available at a height that works uh, the, the heat once I took the uh, metal chimney out the heat cracked the flue uh, clay it doesn't seem to have hurt the, these bricks uh, concrete bricks too much which is a little bit of surprising to me um, but uh, that works. So uh, what I'm going to be doing, I'm filling up a wheelbarrow here. I have this hot water. Of this. So I pull off the, the front concrete lip of the entrance, uh, taking this down. I'm going to put a metal plate over the top of this after I pour some of the hot water down here and into the pit. And then I've got the wheelbarrow and I'll dump some water. And this way, the trench is slipped down there. Supposedly, there'll be enough steam to put out the fire. Um, we'll see what happens. So I just did that. I poured just that. I didn't use anything from the wheelbarrow. I squirted the hose just a little bit uh, back in here. Uh, there's a lot of heat there, uh, but I don't think there's any flame left. Um, I'll kind of check as we go on here. But I, I think you could probably get by with very little uh, squelch water in this kind of system. Uh, there's steam blowing anywhere. The steam's coming off the side. This, this soil's hot. Uh, brick's hot over the top. Metal's hot. But I think the fire is out. I squelched it at uh, 1.30, so it's been about an hour and a half. Decided uh, it's still warm. Uh, the ground is still warm. Uh, but I felt like it was the, the fire itself was out. So I used the shovel and scooped away the dirt and pulled out the bricks and stuff. Um, and I'm getting a lot of heat, but I see no flame. Um, You can see uh, the color change in the soil. Uh, it's 
turned it red, of the uh, soil itself um, will actually uh, be a benefit to the soil microbes uh, down the line. Perhaps not in the first two or three years, but um, I don't know, that's my theory anyway. It's about uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock, and um, you know, my assumption was that the steam would put out the flame and I started digging around in the hull and I was noticing some steam coming out yet. Now, I know the sides can be warm, although well, that side's cool, but uh, I do think I started scooping out here and I ran into some hot stuff down here. And I just uh, think there's fire going on down in the pit. You know, just smoldering, but it's going. Um, so I'm going to dig this out and check more or find out. No, no, the, the sidewalls are still really hot. There they are anyway. Let's see what they're like over here. Yeah, it's too hot to touch just the, the dirt itself. We'll see whether the, that's fire or whether it's just been insulated that well with the, the char. So this is the char, and um, I can put my hand on it, but there's a lot of heat coming out, and my guess is there could be some enough heat that if oxygen got to it, it could reignite. Uh, so uh, using the you know limited amount of water uh, last night and expecting the steam to put it out, it probably worked uh, and did put it out, but there's enough heat and it stayed dry enough that uh, this could reignite. Now usually I would have dumped that wheelbarrow load in there and it would just literally fill up the top of the trench, uh, the pit, because it's, it's not that big around at the top, it just goes deep. And then it would have, you know, dropped down through that sort of a tidal wave over the top and then sink in. And that would have, uh, because the, the char itself is hot and the air around it is hot, um, it would just suck that moisture into all the pores and make it much less uh, burnable. So uh, I'm going to go a little bit less now on doing a minimal amount of water. Uh, you can do fair, get by fairly inexpensively water wise, efficiently water wise, but you got to dump it all, all, all at once and let it go through the whole been. So the temperatures here in the pit, well, the, the char doesn't hold much heat. I still have some, but this is hot here. I mean, you could dig this out, put a chicken in here, and, and roast it, or whatever, a meal, your veggies. Um, might not be enough. I think, yeah, there's some coals, live coals down here. So, air's getting to it, so it's starting to ignite. Still, I, I did get, I don't know how big this container is, but I got that much char out of yesterday's burn after setting overnight. So, usually in this pit, I've been pulling out 15, 12, 12 to 17 uh, gallons of biochar per burn. But usually those burns took four hours. This one took three. And I was using the larger feedstock. While this char still has some heat in it, I'm going to go ahead and add some of my inoculant. It's a locally made bio-inoculant. And and 
Hopefully it's warm enough. It'll suck some of that in there. I think it'll attach anyway um, over time, but when you do it while it's hot, it really sucks it in deep. And dampening it gets rid of the dust too, so that's a hazard that I want. I think it's probably overall it's better to to uh, use use a fair amount of water when you squelch. I've got my hose here. Oh. None of this is on fire, it's fairly cool, but just to keep the dust down. Going into the garden, it's, uh, see, it soaks it up, up a lot of moisture. much better.